And I joke with the guys in the band sometimes when people say, how many, how many musicians in Zirka? And I say, well, there's five musicians and a drummer. <laughs> We're just six regular people with families and jobs and stuff who really look forward to getting together and doing this. For some reason we really click and when we're on stage we can really play up a storm. Um, you know what's fantastic? It is not from Ukraine? Kluge. Yeah. Holy cow, what a fantastic CD. I'm surprised they don't get speeding tickets listening to that. That's really, really <laughs> good music. It is flattering when people say that they remember that Solovey One album, and that's all that their their Dita would play when they drove them to Ukrainian school every week and stuff like that. Eh? Our first drummer, our first real drummer actually, is from Solovey. He did that Solovey One with us in 1982. I started playing drums, it was in grade 12. And I was learning Rush and Led Zeppelin and Deep Purple and uh, all of that kind of stuff for a couple of years. I actually wasn't listening to any Ukrainian music at all until I was about 17. I started off doing sound for Solovey in 1978 and then after that I, I, my first gig on drums was about a year later, so in 79 with them. It was a wedding in Hamilton. I remember how nervous I was. And around that time, I also started playing for Visnyanka, the dance group, at the same time. That was a lot of fun. A lot of good memories. Met a lot of really nice people there. Uh, we traveled to France and Germany and Switzerland and performed there. So a lot of really good memories. And then shortly after that, I met Ron, Ron Kahoot. And uh, we hit it off. And next thing I knew, geez, I'd only been playing drums for a number of years. I was, um, I was doing a gig with him, like in 1981. So uh, 28 years ago this month. <laughs> <laughs> Hard to imagine, eh? So that was a little surreal because, you know, buying those albums and listening to them and then all of a sudden um, being at a gig and sitting there and you're behind everybody and it's like, yeah, that's Jerry Horsky and that's Lance Deschuk and it was like really exciting to be a part of all of that. So um, that all came about because Ron, Ron always had a permanent drummer and he's had David Monas since the mid-70s. But Ron was playing at the Ukrainian Caravan restaurant and they had a cabaret show there. It wasn't easy for him to sub out and take the drummer and the guitar player sure. because uh, it, uh, it really impacted the integrity of the show. So he had to get another drummer and I guess luckily it was me. Had a lot of fun, did a lot of gigs from 81 to 86 with him. That's why David plays on all of the albums except for the one. But regardless, um, it was it was really really good. I remember how exciting it was to start with uh, uh, playing with Solove, and uh, because those are real gigs in front of real people, and you actually got paid. And at first, it was thirty bucks each or something like that, and it was a pretty big deal. Eh? Where six of us would drive to Windsor and uh, play a, a New Year's dance there, and six of us would stay in one hotel room, you know. And it was just, uh, you know, those were good times. Eh? It was a, such an adventure. And then with Solove, we also played. Um, pub nights at the church at 404 Bathurst and I think we were one of the first bands probably to do something like that. Uh, that must have been about 1980. We learned all this music by Teenage Head and, and Talking Heads and Rolling Stones and Jimi Hendrix and uh, the Cars and all kinds of other stuff that was really cool at that time. I remember playing at Christie as well for stuff like that and we would have 700 people come on a Friday night. It was unbelievable. And back then, you could, on a Saturday night, get dressed up and put on your suit and head downtown and there'd be something going on. You would go to Christie or to um, St. Vlad's or Bathurst or Leeds. There would be something happening, right? I was uh, playing with Solovey until 19, the fall of 1983. And then uh, at that point, uh, uh, it was a big decision to make. Ron invited me to uh, to basically join Buri and I would have had to quit Solovey because there were nights where both of us were booked and I had to pick. A decision had to be made so I did tell the guys in Solovey that uh, I was leaving and um, started playing with Ron. That brought a lot of interesting um, um, gigs in the States and um, gee, we played in Chicago, New York and uh, Vancouver and uh, Tons all of over the place. For you. Yeah, yeah, you know, and we would show up places, it was it was surreal. Like we'd play in Vancouver, get picked up in a limousine at the airport. Um, we would play in uh, 
in, in Alberta. We played in Edmonton on the Friday night, and then we would play in Vegreville on the Saturday night, and uh, we had a limo driving us to Vegreville. We learned later it was courtesy of the funeral home in Vegreville, but it doesn't matter. It's still a limo, you know? So that was the thing. Uh, traveling with Ron, you got respect. It was a big deal when you went to town. I, think, I remember in Edmonton, um, we played there first in 1984. Five. There's a guy out there named Roman Bertan from uh, CKR Radio, and yeah. we became friends with him. He was part of the people who booked us, and he interviewed us on the uh, on the radio. We had like a Buddhist special that we ran for about two hours, where we played all different songs and interviewed Ron and I, and uh, and that was a lot of fun. This is a song we did yesterday, ladies and gentlemen. So we also performed it at the dance. A song from the Ukrainian caravan show, The Night of the Cossacks. The song is entitled Fly Cossack. In 1986, he had made a decision that he wanted to use musicians who were available during the day and professionals, and he went off and started a recording studio and all kinds of other opportunities. I was working full-time at Scotiabank at the time, and uh, you know I just couldn't do that. So uh, that was all good. Everybody got along. And uh, so David was his full-time drummer because the restaurant, Ukrainian Caravan restaurant, had closed down by then. I played with... Um, whoever would call. And over the years I've played with uh, Estonian groups and German groups and Swiss and Macedonian and uh, Italian and all kinds of stuff like that. It was a lot of fun. And around that time I also met Alex uh, Fesiak from Dunai. We just kind of hit it off and um, I remember Ron and I drove out to Oshawa and helped them record their demo tape. Uh, with our equipment and stuff and that must have been about 1986. After Buria had not really split up, but Ron had changed the, the, the lineup, the personnel. Quite a few of the guys were available for a Malanka, so I remember playing with uh, five of the Buri guys with Alex on accordion for a Malanka out in Scarborough, and uh, you know, those, those are good memories. That was a lot of fun. So we played for a couple of years. As things got a little busier for Dunai, um, you know, decisions were made, and um, I was married with a baby on the way, and Alex had, had chosen to use another drummer at that point. It was uh, Yar, who he originally had played with. I guess from his time in Ukrainian school, so you know that was a good fit, and uh, that all worked out good. But then, got back to together with Ron again for uh, you know a couple of years and on and off. So I, I worked with Ron from 1981 to 1994, on and off a few times. I've been with Zirka now for about four years, and you know what? We have the same instruments as everybody else. We play the same songs as everybody else. But I think what really helps is that we all really like each other. And uh, we keep the music simple and play with enough spirit and energy and, and heart. And we really like what we do. We're not a rock band. We're not pretending that we're, uh, we're some big deal. You know what I mean? We're just six regular people with families and jobs and stuff who really look forward to getting together and doing this. For some reason, we really click. And when we're on stage, we can really play up a storm. We keep it simple. No drum machines. Uh, some some bands, if you look really closely, a lot of people don't pick this up. Aren't even touching their instruments. They have a keyboard with the rhythm tracks and the lead line yes, and drums, so. you know, programmed into it. And you look at them, and they're either not plugged in or they're not playing. You know, that's fine too. But we we don't have any of that. We we play every note, the good ones, the bad ones, the mistakes, all of that stuff. As a drummer, it is a little mystifying. <laughs> Watching um, them play, especially the violinist Karen here, how she can just pull all this out, just out of thin air off the top of her head and just play like a maniac the way she does. It's just fantastic, eh? So uh, I really, really have a lot of respect for that. So What's really good to see is uh, lately, in the last few years, how many younger bands have started up. It's really nice to see people learning instruments and learning these tunes, playing them with their own flair. You look at, I'm not sure how, old they are but the guys in Zerada holy cow what a fantastic yeah. performance you know I really really enjoyed them there's other bands there's Scopa, Cavalleri, Ruch and uh, just to see that many people getting together and putting bands together learning music and playing you know it's just fantastic it is flattering when people say that they remember that Solovey one album and that's all that their their Dido would play when they drove them to Ukrainian school every week and stuff like that eh?
<laughs> so uh, that is that is flattering. And uh, you know what? A lot of those songs were really really good arrangements, and they really really worked uh, worked out well. It's glad that music like that is still um, um, fondly remembered by 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 a lot of people, and still enjoyed by a lot of people. So uh, so that's that's really good.